Hey everyone, I'm Rod and Todd, a professional YouTuber who makes professional videos. And let's talk about Godzilla again. So, uh, what, a couple weeks ago? Was it a couple weeks ago? I don't know. Um, yeah, but a few videos ago, I did a an unboxing of the Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, Godzilla and Kong figures. And that video proved itself to be mildly popular, and I said in that video that if I got the other uh, two figures who are on the cross cell on the back of the box, that I would do a video on them, and, well, I was able to find them. They weren't as hard to find as I thought they would be. Uh, my local Walmart laid out some big display, and they just had a bunch of them, so I picked them up when I had the chance. And, yeah, so we'll be reviewing three figures today. So, yeah. So let's start with this guy. It's the Warbat. Yeah, uh, so these figures are made by uh, Playmates Toys, I, before I get to this guy. Who, uh, they were behind the original uh, Ninja Turtles line back in the 90s. And I think they really knocked it out of the park with these figures. Uh, the fir my first impressions weren't the best, but these are all really well-constructed figures. So, uh, yeah, actually, let's look at the box first before we look at the figure. We'll uh, move you out of the way. So we have the... Uh, so these, these don't have a plastic bubble surrounding the figure. The figure would just be open, and it's held in there by a zip tie, which is really hard to cut. As you can see, it says blockbuster movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, and I live in America, so as of the time of this recording, uh, the movie hasn't come out yet here in America. However, I've heard it has come out everywhere else, and I've been getting spoilers for it uh, for like the past week, which sucks, but whatever. So, as you can see, it's the War Bat with Osprey, it comes with this little accessory. The Battle Damage Reveal, which is just a little panel that pops off. And on the back, you can see there's the Warbat. And then there's the uh, little Osprey there, the Battle Damage Callout. As you can see, it says Legends Collide as Godzilla and Kong, the two most powerful forces of nature, clash in a spectacular battle for the ages. The monster war rages on the surface, and deep within our world is a spectacular secret realm of the Titans, known as the Hollow Earth is revealed. Alright. And there's a little blurb about the figure here in the back. Powerful enough to tear through armored vehicles with its massive fangs, the war bats are venom-winged monsters that hunt the hidden depths of the Hollow Earth. Alright, and then so there's this uh, cross cell on the back. You got Kong with Battle Axe and Godzilla with Heat Ray. I already did an unboxing of those guys. Skull Crawler with Heave. We uh, review him later on in this video. And then Kong with Fighter Jet and Godzilla with Radio Tower. I am not gonna get those guys because they're just repackaged uh, versions of these guys. Kong has a different head, but basically they're just repackaged versions with different paint jobs or parts or whatever. With different accessories, and honestly, I just need these two. So, yeah. Okay, so now we've got the box out of the way. Let's move on to the actual war mat and the Osprey, which is this tiny little jet. Yeah, if you've never seen Ospreys, they are actually really cool. It's like a like a plane thing with rotors. Uh, it's capable of vertical takeoff and landing. So if it can like take off like this, and then the uh, rotors on the top can rotate forward, which allows it to fly forward. So these are pretty cool vehicles. They're actually used by the U.S. military. Let's say I think they're still used. I don't really know. I'm not really. I don't know that much about military history. These are still like if these have been retired by the Air Force or something. Let me know. So. Uh, yeah, the Warbat uh, doesn't really have any basis in existing Godzilla media. He's original to the movie. If you watch the trailer, he's in the trailer. Kong, like, bashes him into another one. So there's going to be multiple of these guys. And they're like these flying snake things. I don't really know why they're called Warbats, given how the only thing that ties them to a bat is the wings. 
I would have preferred to call them like war snakes or snake bats or something. Uh, besides the Osprey, it comes with this. It's this little clear plastic flight stand. However, I'm not going to put this on here because I learned this the hard way. You're only supposed to put it on and take it off a certain way. You have to pull it out when you're taking when you're taking this off. You have to pull this horizontal ring off of the body straight out horizontal. You can't pull it forward because it snapped the clip on mine. There's a visible crack there and I'm afraid of it if I put it back on there, it will uh, break. But basically you take this horizontal clip and you put it around there and then this vertical clip here and you put it right there and it doesn't really do anything. It's pretty pretty useless. In terms of articulation, this figure doesn't have much. An opening jaw, which is cool. Got some nasty looking fangs on there. You can move his wings uh, up and down. And for some reason they kind of pivot like this. I don't really know what the practical purpose of that is. We can pivot him there. And then the you know, tail here can also. Like that. That's really the only articulation on this guy. It's pretty basic. It's just kind of frozen with this one pose. In terms of the uh, battle damage, there's a little panel on his wing. It's kind of hard to get it off. But it, okay, and yeah, it just comes off in one go. Uh, so, it's got this bright red, like, blood, blood and guts detailing underneath there. You can see there's a little molded, whatever these are, it continues under there. There's always been some great detail on these guys. Again, I do really think Playmates hit it out of the park with these figures. There's the back of it, if you're interested in the back. You can see it's kind of coiling around. It's it's a cool figure. It's not my favorite by a long shot, but it's it's pretty good. And the wings, they uh, were detached in the package. You'd have to pop those on, so these kind of come off pretty easily. And in the... Uh, in the uh, trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong, Kong is shown, like, uh, there's t it's basically two war bats. Kong has one war bat. No, he fell over. He's grabbing grabbed one war bat by the tail. The other one is flying towards him, and he swings the war bat that he has in his hand into the other one, and they collide. So I was wondering uh, earlier if you could fit the tail in Kong's hand, and I tried it, and... Yeah, you can. So if you want to recreate that scene from the movie, there you go. You can do that. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but if it is in Playmates, you are a genius. Okay, moving on. The one that was the hardest for me to find, uh, I actually had to go to two separate Walmarts when I looked for these. I found the first, or I found the the uh, Warbat and the guy I'm going to review after this one. I'm not saying his name because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, in the... Uh, at one Walmart, and then I had to go to another one to find this guy. So he's kind of hard to find. But this is the Skull Crawler with Heave. Let's actually get this guy out of the way first and take a look at the box. You can see it's his... Skull crawler with he with the battle damage call out on the back. Skull crawler with heave. The most dangerous super species on Skull Island, the ferocious skull crawler attacks with razor sharp claws and a whiplash tail to dominate opponents in battle. You can see it calls out the uh, heave it comes with, which apparently is an acronym for Hollow Earth Anti Gravity Vehicle. The Skull Crawlers are pretty cool. They're the uh, main villains of Kong Skull Island, where basically there's these guys, and they're all over the place, and Kong fights them for a bit. I guess it is Heave Accessory. It's this little vehicle. I do actually kind of like these little vehicles that they come with, because I think it really does a good job of communicating the sheer scale of these creatures. Because without, like, a human being for comparison, these action figures could just be generic monster guys or whatever. 
but see, this is supposed to house a whole bunch of humans, this presumably, I think. I, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet, so for all I know, these could just be, like, remotely piloted drones or something. But it looks like it's supposed to house humans, especially with that little windshield paint on the front. So, yeah, as you can see, this would be, like, a massive vehicle compared to this thing. Which is, yeah, Bravo Playmates, so I, I like these. Not the most functional, but they're pretty cool. And since the skull crawler is supposed to be an army builder, as with the Warbat, you can buy a whole bunch of them and get a whole bunch of heaves, or if you buy multiple skull crawlers, a whole bunch of these ospreys. So you can have massive aerial fleets attacking your guys. Of course, given how these figures are kind of hard to find, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's kind of my unspoken rule with, uh, figures that are hard to find is that I only buy one of them even if they're an army builder because I'm not an army builder guy myself personally but even if I was I would just buy one and be done with it because I want uh, I want these hard to find figures to be found by multiple people I want other people to have them besides me I'm not a scalper scalpers go die uh, so yeah this figure does have some pretty good articulation you can see, opening jaw opens pretty far, in fact. Rawr. Yeah, there he goes. And then he has some nice universal joints at his legs. You can move it up and down a bit, rotates a bit, and then over here on his... Is that a knee joint? I don't really know what to call that. You can go, you can move it forward and back a bit, and rotate it. It's pretty functional. Plus, he has a ball joint to tail. As with Godzilla, you uh, the tail will be detached in the box in order to make it fit. So you have to uh, you know, pop it on yourself. But it's really not hard to do that. It may require a little bit of force, but you can pop it on pretty easily. But one little detail I like is that you can see... See, they're called skull crawlers because the front of their face... Like, their face kind of looks like a skull. You can see there's the mouth and there's this little black circle here which is supposed to be the you know the eye of the skull however he has eyes painted in right there in kong skull island if you look really closely you can actually see these are his eyes he has tiny little eyes behind those and that is a really small little detail and i really want to commend uh playmates for including that in terms of the battle damage, this guy probably has the biggest and coolest battle damage yet. This panel here, just, yeah, can get it off. It pops off, and he has this massive section. There's like a sculpted rib cage and spinal cord in there. That's really nice sculpting. I'm sure it's not the deepest sculpting, but it looks, looks pretty good. And if you want to, you can like collapse them like this, have it be like a dead scroll crawler, or, like if someone ate them or something. I don't know, just a fun little idea. And despite the uh, only having two legs, he does, it's pretty easy for him to stand up, which is not what I thought. I honestly thought this guy would be a nightmare to get standing up. But I also do want to say, I think this is the longest figure in the line. Because when I, when I opened up Godzilla, I commented on how long he was. But there's Godzilla next to the skull crawl. As you can see, he is considerably longer. I, I don't really know how to... Let me just do this. See, this me lining up. He's a bit longer than Godzilla. Which is... Yeah, this guy, in fact, this guy, this random little army builder villain guy, is the uh, probably one of the, the biggest one they've released. Is It's, it's cool. And if you want, you can have them fight Kong, because they would do that in the movie. There you go. So yeah, I, I, I really like the Skullcrawler. It's cool. Just a big, hulking beast. But now, we move on to the final figure. You probably already read his name in the title, but if you have not seen Godzilla vs. Kong, and you do not want the final antagonist of the movie spoiled... Click away now. I'm giving you a fair warning. If you haven't either seen the movie or had it spoiled to you yet or whatever, and you 
Don't want to know who the final antagonist is because it's supposed to be kind of a big mystery. Look away now. All right? You've been warned. Here we go. Mecha Godzilla. Yes, the evil robotic clone of Godzilla is making his debut in the uh, Godzilla Cinematic Universe in this awesome, awesome new appearance or new body or whatever. So yeah, Mecha Godzilla is an interesting case. They tried to keep him under wraps pretty heavily. They didn't show him at all in the first trailer as, or whatever, but everyone was like, oh yeah, Mecha Godzilla is going to be the big bad. It's obvious. And. It was basically like Doomsday from Batman v Superman. They tried to keep it under wraps, but everyone speculated, and they speculated correctly. And so it got to the point to where, by the final trailer, they just outright showed him. If you haven't seen, there's this TV spot that recently aired, I guess. I don't know. And it just outright shows Mechagodzilla in the end. And I've already gotten it spoiled, what Mechagodzilla does in the movie. I haven't seen it, but I got it spoiled to me earlier today. But I'm not going to spoil it for you. Just know he's a robot Godzilla that is going to fight both Godzilla and Kong. And that's going to be the big force that makes him stop fighting and team up. So let's take a look at the box, shall we? As you can see, it is the Mecha Godzilla with Heave. And the battle damage call out there. See, so it comes with another Heave. It says here it's a robotic apex predator with unstoppable powers of laser destruction. Mecha Godzilla was created in secret to destroy Godzilla and end the reign of monsters. And looking at this thing pretty closely, yeah, this thing looks like it was built to kill Godzilla. In terms of articulation, he actually has more articulation than his organic counterpart. You put them side by side, you see the similarities. I got that his mouth open. So, he doesn't have any head articulation, but of course he can't open his jaw. Pretty far. Arr! He has universal joints at his shoulders, so you can move them forward and out a bit. Which is more than Godzilla can say, he only has simple swivel joints. Unfortunately, despite what it looks like, he does not have any elbow articulation, and his claws are not jointed, so they cannot open and close, which sucks, but, eh, whatever. I, this figure is already good enough as it is. I, that's not going to ruin it for me. Universal joints at the uh, hips there, so we can move them out and forward and back. Again, Godzilla only has simple swivel joints, so he can't do any of that complex motion. And knee articulation. Which, once again, is something the regular Godzilla figure doesn't have. And also, uh, foot swivels, for some reason. I pointed out in my unboxing video, it kind of looked like Godzilla's feet should be able to swivel, but they can't. And he finishes it off with a ball-jointed tail, which, again, you have to attach in the... Uh, once you get it out. Godzilla also has the ball-jointed tail. However, I think he's a bit longer. Let me see if I can put him side by side. Yeah, so his tail is slightly longer, but it's only because of this big spike thing at the end. And also, Godzilla's is made out of a much firmer, harder plastic. Or the tail is. But this tail's pretty bendy. Pretty flexible, which is cool. It allows for some more posability. It won't hold the pose, but like if you're just messing around with it, you want to have him like stab Godzilla with this thing on the end. You can do that. So yeah, this is just a pretty good Mecha Godzilla. And of course, he comes with the uh, Heave vehicle, which is the exact same mold as the one that came with the Skull Crawler. However, as you can see, it is in dark green instead of. Silver. I think they're supposed to be silver in the film, so this one's a bit inaccurate, but whatever. Also of note is that my brother and I were horsing around with this, and he noticed there is a hole in the top of Mechagodzilla's mouth. That hole, as we found out, is compatible with the atomic breath. I can get this thing in. It is compatible with the atomic breath piece that comes with regular Godzilla. So that makes me think that... 
This figure was originally intended to come with some big laser breath attack piece or something that would fit in his mouth in a similar vein as the atomic breath. However, they didn't. They either didn't have the time for it or didn't have the funds for it, and so they just found it easier to recycle the heave accessory that came with Skullcrawler. However, of course, you can uh, buy a second Godzilla with Heat Ray. Those are not hard to find at all. They're lingering on Walmart shelves. No one wants those guys. So if you want, you can just buy a second Godzilla for the Atomic Breath and give it to this guy. Or even buy this, maybe spray paint it red or something like it's a laser and do that. I don't know. I'm just saying something. But yeah, again, I do like these little vehicles because they, again, it does communicate a sense of scale. Like, th this is supposed to fit multiple human beings inside. And this is a. It compared to this monstrosity. Oh, and yes, the uh, battle damage. I should mention that. Almost forgot. <laughs> Uh, so, on all these other figures, take off the battle damage piece, and there's like blood and guts, because they're organic monsters. But this is a big robot, so you remove this, it's a chest panel, and there's all sorts of circuitry and mechanics inside, which is, again, cool. That's great. Really great. See, so yeah, I, I honestly think this is probably the best figure in the range, just because, oh, come on, this thing looks awesome. Mechagodzilla is normally this big clunky robot with missiles in his hands and stuff like that, but this is just a big hulking beast with bright red back spikes or back fins, which Mechagodzilla normally doesn't have. And if you have King Kong and Godzilla here, you can just put them all side by side and uh, let them fight. I pointed out in my unboxing of these two that these are really good toys. For like for kids, these are really good. Just like with uh, Godzilla and Kong, they are producing um, a mega version of Mega Godzilla. I, I think they are towards like this, but with less articulation, and it's probably about this big. I don't really know how big it is, but I just know it's bigger than this, has less articulation, and is ten dollars more than these little basic guys here. Of course, the basic ones are way better from a collector's standpoint, but in my opinion, if you're just a little kid who wants big monsters to bash into things, you get you should get the mega ones. But these figures are really great, not just from a toy collector's perspective, but for someone who's a pretty big fan of Godzilla. Like, I'm not the biggest, honestly, but, like, again, th these are good figures. They have a lot of articulation, and they hold poses really well. And they're gigantic. And the fact that these figures are 10 bucks a pop, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, in my opinion. So, there you go. These are the only five figures I want to get, unless they make, like, King Ghidorah or Mothra on this scale. There's a bunch of other figures. There's the, uh, of course, the aforementioned Godzilla with Heat Ray and Kong with... Or not, not Godzilla with Heat Ray, but Godzilla with the Radio Tower and Kong with... Uh, fighter jets, which are just these figures in different colors with different accessories. So I don't need them at all. And there's also the Hong Kong battle versions of Godzilla and Kong, which is supposed to make them look like the uh, like they're in Hong Kong, which I, I guess is supposed to be the climactic battle at the end of the movie. Again, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. But basically, it's just they took these these two and just added some purple paint on them to make it look like they're illuminated by the purple lights in the scene. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't need those at all. And then, uh, there's, of course, the mega versions of these three, and then the, there's, like, some talking ones of Godzilla and Kong, which supposed to make, like, roaring sounds or something. I, again, I have no need for those. I'm just gonna get these guys. Anyway, I'm probably rambling now, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed uh if you did please like and subscribe and turn on notifications and all that stuff uh, we are so close to 100 subscribers we're like what two or three away and if you guys uh if we make it to 100 subscribers i am going to do a tour of my collection i just installed some new shelf lights and i think you guys are really gonna like and i'd love to show them to you so Please subscribe if you want to see that.
anyway, uh, this has been Ron and Todd signing off.